Here's the fact that made my mind go The original meaning of Mrs. had nothing to do with marriage. More than a century, English-speaking cultures have used the terms Miss and Mrs. to socially distinguish between unmarried and married women. Of course, this custom has come under feminist scrutiny because while women's designations depend on whether they're married to a man, men get to remain Mr. throughout their whole lives, regardless of whether they've ever tied the knot or not. Thanks to that, the marriage-neutral Ms. was revived. But it turns out that Mrs. wasn't always such a gender norm-enforcing title. Up until the mid-18th century, Miss, Mrs., and Mr. were all on equal playing fields, reflecting social status. Originally, all these designated masters and mistresses wealthy enough to have servants. The only difference between a miss and a missus is that a miss was under 18, unless she was a prostitute, in which case she remained miss for her whole life. Then along came the 1750s and everything changed. Unmarried upper class women began designating themselves as miss. Which means, friends, that miss became unmarried before missus got hitched. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mrs. had come to likelier denote a businesswoman than a wife. But as that trend of unmarried missing around trickled from the upper classes down to the commoners, by 1900, Mrs. had taken on the definition that we think of today. Ultimately, the reason we have these two titles isn't so much to brand married women as taken, but rather brand single women as available. All single ladies, all single ladies, 18th century ladies, 18th century ladies, now put your hands up, pour some buggy to the club, all roll up, call me miss, but I'm not a prosty. 